Ladies and gentlemen, assets or extensions inside of Google Ads can be confusing. And in today's video, I wanted to shed some light to essentially every single asset, how it can be used, which ones you should be using, and really just go over everything so you have a better understanding of Google Ads assets as they are now named and formerly known as Google Ads extensions. I still often refer to them as extensions. So throughout this video, if I refer back to them as an extension, same thing, they're an asset. Uh, Sometimes I get confused. Everything's always updating Google Ads, so yeah, never mind me. <laughs> so I apologize in advance. Now to start off, let us go to our actual Google Ads account. What I would recommend doing is clicking on one of your campaigns here and then actually looking at the assets. Sometimes people will have their assets at the account level. I don't love doing this at the account level because sometimes if you have multiple campaigns targeting different things, uh, it'll get a little messy and it's not always the best. I prefer doing the actual extensions at the campaign level. That way, if we have a campaign that's doing snow plowing and then we have one that does pool installation later in the year, those assets aren't trying to cross over, they stay separated, but I'll show you that in a second. Now to start off, we're going to go through essentially all the assets here. And uh, in order to get to them, all we have to do is click on ads and assets and then hit assets and then this site will pop up. This is our demo account. I'm sure you've probably seen it in one of the previous videos, but I'm gonna walk you through each and every one of these and essentially go over what they are. So to start off, we have the image extension and the image extension is pretty simple to understand. All you have to do is upload an image of essentially whatever you're selling. Uh, hopefully it's a nice image and then Google will display that image beside your ad. The image extension or asset looks like this and it can take multiple forms uh, on mobile devices, it's slightly different. Uh, so. It, it's essentially the same thing on mobile device, but it is slightly different. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially what an image extension is. Pretty simple to understand. Again, you upload a few images, Google picks which whatever one it feels like it should uh, use to actually display beside your ad, and then it goes from there. Moving forward, we have the business name and the business logo extension. Now these two extensions cannot be accessed unless you actually fill out the advertiser verification process, uh, which all you have to do is come over here to tools and settings, hit advertiser verification, and then complete the form. I created an entire video on this uh, to essentially walk you through that process, what it looks like, and make things a little easier on you if you're not sure. But the business name and logo extension are two brand new things to Google Ads, and like I said, they have to be unlocked essentially in order to get to them. Now the business name and business logo extension look like this. They're not super big, but it does allow you to put your uh, brand name here and then you have the little logo next to it. It's kind of nice to actually separate your ad from all the other ads on Google Ads, which if you can do anything is kind of a big boost because if you can separate yourself by one or 2%, it's likely that it will have a pretty big effect, especially if you stand out that little bit more. That's why we're always trying to, you know, fill out and use as many assets as possible to make our ads big as possible. So uh, essentially they're seen. And if they're more likely to be seen, they're more likely to be clicked on, which helps with click through it, which helps with quality score, which helps with getting more leads for a cheaper price and, you know, just overall account success. So if you can do uh, just that one or 2% more that other people aren't willing to do, chances are your account will have a little bit more success or maybe even a lot more success. Now the next one is the site link extensions and you can have quite a few of these on the actual uh search engine to pop up. So all of these below here are site link extensions, as you can see. And essentially what they do is allow the user to go to a specific web page that you have. So maybe they don't want to go to your homepage. They only want to go to one part of your actual service section or your product section or whatever it is. They already know what they want. They can just skip ahead. And it's kind of nice. It just speeds up the entire interaction, makes everyone's life a little simpler. And it also makes your ads a lot bigger. I think it's eight or 10 extensions you can have appear at one point. I think it's on mobile devices specifically, but you should have quite a few of these. And one thing I would recommend checking out is the optimization checklist, which lists all the actual numbers below here on how many you should actually have for every single account, uh, which is kind of nice because uh, I'm prone to forgetting all these things of exactly how many you need. I always refer back to that uh, when we're setting them up in the beginning of an account. Uh, but yeah, these are super important to have because they are going to dramatically increase the size of your actual ad. And like I said, the bigger the ad, the more likely it is to be seen, the higher the click-through rate, the higher expected click-through rate, the higher the actual quality score, the lower your cost per click, the more leads you get, the more sales you get, yada, 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 more success overall. So very, very important to actually add these. And these are one of the actual original extensions inside of Google Ads. They've been around forever. So uh, yeah, definitely something you wanna add. The next one is the actual call it extension. If we click on this, it essentially allows us to list out a whole bunch of benefits on why people should pick us. And I had a whole bunch here. Uh, again, this is a demo account. I'll show you one 
Oh, here we go. This is an excellent one. Uh, essentially no change or cancel fees, best price guarantee. You're just adding more and more benefits here. Uh, and it's just a nice way to, again, expand the ad, make it bigger. And really it's simple, but most people aren't going to take the time to do this. Uh, we have a whole bunch in our Google ads done for you bundle. If you don't feel like doing that, uh, you might want to check that out. If you're a little lazy, like I am, I use that for most of the actual account setup just because it saves us so much time. Uh, moving forward, we have the actual structured snippet extension. This one is again, pretty old old inside of Google ads and really allows us to add even more to our actual account. Now these ones are kind of unique in that you can pick only certain headers. So essentially, if you can see here, we have featured, uh, there's also styles. Um, there's a few of them and you kind of got to get creative with this. And for this one, actually creating this, you just hit the big blue plus icon. Uh, and like I said, headers, these things you got to kind of get creative with neighborhoods is one that almost anyone or any business can use. So you could list out a whole bunch of like places that you operate in um, service catalog, the actual services you offer. But like I said, you kind of got to get creative with this. It's nice to have and again, makes the ad a lot bigger inside of Google ads. And it's just something that you should probably be using for almost every single campaign. The next one is the actual call extension. And this is pretty self explanatory. The call extension looks like this. And it allows the actual individual to call you right away, they can skip over your actual ad and just go straight to calling your business. It's very nice to have. And it's pretty simple to set up you just enter your phone number, make sure it has the right country in it and bingo bango, you're done. And if your business really relies on phone calls, this is something you should definitely look into. If you're only doing online sales, this is probably something you might want to avoid as you're probably gonna get more inquiries and problems and stuff like that. But if you're a service-based business that sells maybe pools or HVAC repair or installation or plumbing or fence installation, something like that, the phone call extension is just an absolutely amazing one to have. The next extension is the actual lead form extension. This is really new to Google ads. And it is something that not a lot of people actually use just because it's a little bit of a pain to actually set up with some CRMs, which is customer relationship management software. Essentially what it allows you to do is instead of going to your website and completing a form submission, it allows you to complete the form submission directly on the ad. Now, whether or not these are going to be high quality form submissions, uh, I'll let you decide on that, but normally we don't see the best results with this. So we tend to stay away from it. Uh, but I'm sure there are people out there that have absolutely great results with this. And uh, it allows you to actually just, like I said, complete a form through the ad and just essentially get a quote from there, which is kind of nice for a lot of people. The next one is the actual location extension. And this is kind of hit and miss for a lot of businesses. This allows you to actually put in your location and I'll see if I can find one. Here is a location extension. As you can see, this one's in Belfast, it allows people to click on it and then pull it up on Google maps. Now, if you are a service based business, but don't really rely on people coming to your place of business, you more or less go to them. This is an extension you may or may not want. If you're an e-commerce company and no one ever comes to your business, uh, this is probably something you should also avoid, but there are certain businesses that rely on people going to that actual area, namely a business that might come to mind is maybe a movie theater or a drive in or, you know, fast food place or a restaurant or something like that, where they actually have to go to that this extension might be really, really good, maybe a bar or something like that, uh, where this would be very, very useful. But for a lot of businesses, uh, the location extension is kind of a hit or miss. The next extension is the price extension. And essentially, you are able to add in a whole bunch of price on products or services you offer. It is interesting because there's a lot of thought behind this and it kind of comes back to the promotion, which is do we want to show our pr prices up front uh, or let the customer kind of figure that out later on throughout the process? If price is a massive issue inside of your industry, maybe it's best to show it up front and maybe those people who sue those prices and maybe it's out of their league or it's affordable for them will either click it or not click it, which may or may not save you some money, which is something interesting to think about. For a lot of our service based businesses, we don't normally put the actual pricing on there. Uh, just because if people are already super fixated on the price, that's the only reason they're going to pick us. That's not normally a customer we want. And especially for the promotions tab as well, pricing's a little different. Promotions is really where we tend to stay away from. And the reason for that is we don't always want to be discounting because then it comes off as a cheap brand. 
and we're really going to essentially shoot ourselves in the foot long run if people are always looking for the promotion and we're only getting clients who are attracting that promotion. And I'll show you an actual image of the promotion extension as well because we're already on the topic of that. And it looks like this, and as you can see, $120 off your first month. This could essentially be anything for you if you're in business. This could be you know 50% off your first time for you know installing a fence or a pool installation or whatever it is. I don't know. You guys get the point of what a promotions extension is. Uh, but yeah, pricing is kind of one of those things that it really depends on your scenario and uh, what you want to do with it. And I would really consult either the owner of the business or whoever you're doing this for before actually adding these two. These can really impact the campaign. Now, the next one is the app extension. And this is really unique that some businesses can use this really well. Mostly online businesses I see like... Um, Instacart is a great example where you could order online. Uber would be another one uh, where the app is really where the business is going to be done. But for most service-based businesses, uh, the app is just not something you should be even thinking about. That's just going to be a waste of money for the most part because you have to be able to, one, have a good app and two, really follow through on the customer journey through that app and make sure they buy because you already paid for essentially this install of the app and uh, really wanna follow that up. And not a lot of companies are capable of doing that well. So if you are one of those companies, maybe the app extension is great for you, but if you're not one of those companies, this is probably something you should stay away from. Now, there are a few other extensions inside the Google Ads account that I haven't talked about. Uh, most of them are dynamically generated, dynamic image, uh, dynamic call out extensions, I believe, dynamic site links. And essentially all that means is Google is going to gather all the data off your website and make these automatically for you. This is sometimes good, this is sometimes not good. Uh, it really depends how well indexed your site is, how well maintained it is, how good the conversion rate is on it. Uh, that's going to be really up for you. Most of the time, I don't recommend using dynamically generated things. I prefer to control it and make sure that what we're putting out there is of the highest quality possible because if we're spending the money, we might as well you know, generate a good call it extension or a good structured snippet extension. And most often than not, Google's going to generate a lot of them. Most of them are gonna be kind of low quality and then it will figure out low over time which ones are gonna generate better results later. Uh, but for most businesses, they don't wanna spend the money on that, especially at the beginning of the campaign. So I would highly recommend just going in and creating these actual extensions. Now, one thing I should mention is creating these at the actual campaign level. Uh, all we have to do for these uh, is hit the big blue plus icon like in the call out one and then come over here, hit campaign. You can add them to the account, but if you have any different type of campaigns that really aren't going after the same extensions or those extensions would not be applicable, I would highly recommend just adding it to the campaign level, saving yourself a lot of time. You add it to the ad group level, that's really minute, and then you're gonna have to add a whole bunch, and normally that's also a waste of time, so normally your campaign is your best bet. Uh, so yeah, that is essentially extensions and everything summed up in a nutshell. Like I said before, check out the Google Ads optimization checklist. It walks you through essentially everything that you have to do to optimize these accounts, and really goes over the extensions as well. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding Google Ads, extensions, or anything else inside of Google Ads, leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer it. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, and I wish you all well.